Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to New York City and the commissioning of the USS John Bassalone DDG-122. I am Commander Matthew Brooks, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. We welcome those with us in person and our friends and family as they participate in today's event via the World Wide Web. We are here today to commission the second ship to bear the name of the United States Marine and Medal of Honor recipient, Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone. The first USS Bassalone DDE-824 was a gearing class escort destroyer. She was commissioned in Quincy, Massachusetts on July 26, 1949. Her sponsor was United States Marine Sergeant Lena May Bassalone, the widow of John Bassalone. DDE-824 sailed the world's oceans and saw action off the coast of Vietnam, for which she earned three battle stars. She was decommissioned on November 1, 1977. The crew is poised and ready to continue the proud legacy of a true hero. And like John Bassalone, we will willingly enter the breach when called upon by our nation. We are, we are delighted to have members of the Bassalone family join us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. We are honored to have Medal of Honor recipient and United States Marine Sergeant Dakota Meyer with us today. Sergeant Ma Meyer received his honors for his actions during the Battle of Gan Ganjikal in Kunar Province, Afghanistan in 2009. Sanjit Meyer, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Additionally, we are pleased to have several USS Barcelona DDE 824 crew members with us today. Gentlemen, please stand and be recognized. Please be seated. Additionally, we are pleased to have several USS Bassalone DDE 824 crew members with us today. Gentlemen, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Would all active duty and veterans and first responders please stand? Would all military and first responders families Please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service and sacrifice. Please be seated. Our ceremony today is a time-honored trad tradition that began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship to life. In just a few moments, the Navy Band Northeast and United States Marine Corps Band Quantico will render honors to the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors the presentation of colors and our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guest, Lieutenant Commander Gerald E. Murray, Jr., Chaplain Corps, United States Navy retired, our ceremony chaplain. <laughs> Midshipmen Maggie Bork and Miss Anna Bork, our maids of honor. <laughs> Commander Justin Parker, United States Navy, DDG 51 class program manager's representative Supervisor of Shipbuilding Bath. <laughs> Ms. Kim Van Note and Ms. Diane Hawkins, our long glass presenters and Barcelona family representatives. <laughs> Captain Frank Russo, United States Navy retired, and Mr. Dan Demer, co chairs, USS Barcelona Commissioning Committee. Captain Aaron Anderson, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Group Southeast. 
Captain Seth Miller, United States Navy DDG 51 class shipbuilding program manager. Mr. Charles F. Crew, President, General Dynamics, Beth Ironworks. Rear Admiral Thomas Anderson, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. The Honorable Zach Iskell, Commissioner, New York City Emergency Management. Lieutenant General Roberta L. Shea, United States Marine Corps, Commanding General, Fleet Marine Force, Atlantic, Commander, Marine Forces Command, and Commander, Marine Corps Forces, Northern Command. Admiral Darrell Cottle, United States Navy, Commander, United States Fleet Forces Command, Commander, United States Naval Forces Northern Command, and Commander, United States Naval Force Strategic Command. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsors, Ms. Ryan Mannion and Ms. Amy Looney Heffernan, escorted today by Master Chief Aaron Morrow, U U USS John Bassalone, Command Master Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro, the 78th Secretary of the Navy, escorted today by Commander Karn Livingston, United States Navy, USS John Bassalone, Commanding Officer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Platform, hand salute. Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors.
What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, all the So gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was. Retire the colors. Platform. Ready. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Murray will now deliver the invocation. What a beautiful day the good Lord has given to us. It's a great day for the United States of America. It's a great day for the city of New York. And it's a great day for our Navy Marine Corps team. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that you will bless us with your spirit as we gather this morning to commission this vessel of the United States Navy, the USS John Bassalon. Endow us all with such loyalty and devotion that we will not lose faith with the glorious heritage of freedom which has been handed down to us by the patriots of old. Keep us from finding our security in arms alone, but in the godly conviction that right makes might. Bless the officers and crew of this ship, giving them fidelity in all their tasks. Create and maintain among them cheerfulness and a good ship spirit. Give them the same courage, determination, and unwavering devotion to duty that Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone, United States Marine Corps, demonstrated on the fields of battle at Henderson Field on Guadalcanal and on Iwo Jima. Grant fair weather in all her voyages, and if dangers are confronted in the midst of the sea, may you always be our strong tower of defense. Preserve this ship and her crew from the violence of the enemy. Make her crew strong in fear of God and the love of righteousness, so that they may ready themselves to uphold the high ideals upon which our nation was founded. This, O Lord, we pray in your name, Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Murray. We would like to thank the Navy Band Northeast and Marine Corps Band Quantico 
the 6th Communication Battalion Color Guard, and the Naval Submarine Base Groton Saluting Battery, Marine Air Group 49, and Ms. Brandy Sutton for their support today. We welcome the Adjunct General, State of New York, Mayor, Mayor General Ray Shields, New York Army National Guard. We would like to thank and acknowledge the City of New York, the Commissioners of Ports America, and their amazing team, and especially the John Bassalone Commissioning Committee for the generosity and tremendous support. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, Parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Zach Iskell. Good morning. My name is Zach Iskell. I'm the Commissioner for New York City Emergency Management. Uh, I also served two tours in Iraq, and 20 years ago uh, today, I was in the Second Battle of Fallujah with John Bassalone's 1st Marine Division. And we certainly thought of ourselves as the sons of John Bassalone. So it is what an honor it is to be here today. I also just want to start by thanking uh, two of my good friends, Amy Looney and Ryan Mannion, the ship's sponsors for your unwavering com commitment to veterans. Uh, these two women have turned the searing pain of grief into quite a legacy of love and service in honor of their husband and their brother. I'd also like to thank the members of the commissioning party who have joined us here today. And more than anything else, it is my honor to say, welcome to New York. The Navy and Marine Corps have a long history with the city of New York. As a city commissioner and a Marine Corps veteran, I'm part of that history, as are hundreds of other Marine Corps veterans in service of our city and our nation. Since 1775, New York City's ports and people have supported the Marine Corps during the Revol and the Navy. During the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812, Marines fought to defend the Hudson, the East River, and our ports. In the Civil War, World War I and World War II, you could find lines of recruits, immigrants ready to sacrifice their lives for their adoptive country right down the street in Union Square in Manhattan. In our darkest days, Marines and sailors deployed to New York to rescue and recover in the wake of 9-11. Hundreds of Marine veterans continue to live in service in this city as members of the FDNY, NYPD, emergency management, and other city agencies who are dedicated to keeping New Yorkers and our nation safe. Today, this commissioning will add another point to this long timeline. This naval ship will be named for the great John Bassalone, a Marine Corps legend born and raised in New York State. It will set sail from our city's ports. And in the years to come, it will carry thousands in the name of freedom, service, and the American people. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Commissioner Iskell. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Crew. Good morning. Distinguished guests, Commander Livingston and the crew of the John Bassalone sponsors, spouses, family, and friends. It is my privilege to represent the more than 7,000 men and women of General Dynamics Bath Ironworks here this morning. Our company has a 140 year legacy, and this ship is one that continues that legacy and adds to the more than four centuries of shipbuilding in the state of Maine. Ships built by our city of Bath have been deployed and have earned the reputation from the men and women who have served on them as Bath built is best built. We strive to be worthy of the reputation of a bath-built ship by demonstrating commitment to safely execute high-quality work each and every day. BIW has built 39 destroyers in the Arleigh Burke class. Producing these magnificent ships takes hundreds of thousands of hours of engineering, design, and planning ship fitting and welding, 
installation of pipe, cable, ventilation, and insulation, thousands of gallons of paint, a robust team of test and activation members, partnerships with world-class system manufacturers like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, General Electric, and Rolls-Royce, and a supervisor of shipbuilding to inspect and accept the ship on behalf of the United States Navy. Most of the members of our shipbuilding family could not be here with us today in person, but some have joined us. Please stand to be recognized. To all the men and women who put their heart and soul into this incredibly in complex ship, we salute you for your commitment to your craft. This ship represents a tremendous investment in the safety and security of our future, and I have confidence that in the hands of the U.S. Navy sailors, it will excel in its mission in protecting our country and our families. Godspeed, USS John Bassalone, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crew. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Diane Hawkins. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for coming to join us on this such a memorable day. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the Secretary of the Navy, Carlos del Toro, Admiral Caudill, Lieutenant General Shea, Representative Lalata, Commissioner Isco, Commander Livingston, and the crew of the USS John Bassalone, DDG-122, our sponsors, Ray Mannion, Amy Looney Hefferman, the Bath Iron Works, and members of the Bassalone family. My name is Diane Hawkins. I am one of the children of the youngest daughter of the 10 Bassalone born to Theodora and Salvatore Bassalone. Salvatore was born in Italy, while Theodore's parents also born there in the region of Benevento in Colisanita. Uh, Theodora was born in Manville, New Jersey, a small town where they raised their family in Raritan with a large Italian community not too far from where we are now. Gathered here today are nieces and nephews, grand nieces. We are proud to represent our Uncle John on this momentous occasion. And as you can see, we are a very large, very Italian family. It is important to note who is not here. There are no children, grandchildren, or great-grandnieces of John Bassalone. That's because he was killed in action on Iwo Jima on 19 February 1945 at the age of 28, before he could start a family with the love of his life, Lena. Last night I gave a letter that uh, Aunt Mary left for us, and John was talking to his parents, asking for his uh, baptism papers, because he met this beautiful Italian woman who knew how to cook, and he knew his Italian mother would love that. And we were so ha I was so happy to read that, because I realized that not only was he a fighter, but he found love in his short life. Because our Uncle John died before any of us were born, we had to rely on others to teach us who our uncle was. Military history has taught us that Uncle John was the first enlisted Marine to receive the Medal of Honor in World War II. In fact, of the almost 590,000 Marines who served in World War II, John Bassalone was the only enlisted Marine to receive the Medal of Honor, Navy Cross, and Purple Heart. Many watched the HBO series The Pacific, which depicted, depicted the experiences of three Marines who served in the Pacific Theater during World War II, one being our Uncle John. But that was Hollywood. We, we relied on the memories of our grandfather, our parents, our siblings, especially our Aunt Mary, and from Uncle Donald, the youngest, for insight on who Uncle John was. 
He recalled when at age 13 there was a huge parade for Uncle John in Raritan after he returned from overseas. He remembered his brother stayed with the family for a while, but he did not talk about what happened at Guadalcanal. He was proud of what he did, but he didn't have a big head. Uncle John, he told us, was very likable and nice looking, and he liked to drink scotch. But he also remembered that even then, Uncle John spoke of going back to fight. Instead, he was voluntold to go across the country and give speeches saying over and over the words, quote, all my buddies overseas on the front lines, they really appreciate everything you wonderful people are doing by backing the attack and buying these war bonds, the end of quote. In 2009, I sought to find out about my uncle, starting with the Marine Corps Public Affairs Office here in Manhattan. There I met Lieutenant Colonel Neil Murphy, who gave me a vial of black sand from Iwo Jima. He said if I wanted to learn about John Bassalone, then retrace his footsteps in his battlefields, and it will be an unforgettable experience. It certainly was. I visited his fighting hole on Guadalcanal, where his heroic actions and personal valor contributed for his Medal of Honor citation, quote, in large measure to the virtual annihilation of a Japanese regiment. I ventured to the Philippines where he had earned the nickname Manila John and fought in front of Douglas MacArthur using the boxing skills taught him by his older brothers, Carlo and Angelo. I traveled to Australia where in May 1943, he was presented with the powder blue ribbon with the 13 white stars of the Medal of Honor. I went to Iwo Jima, where he led his Marines, or as he called them, his boys, up the sloping terrace of the deep black sand, really volcano ash, and took out a Japanese blockhouse holding up the advance only to be fatally struck down. According to his Naval Cross citation, Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone, quote, by his intrepid initiative, outstanding skill, and valiant spirit of self-sacrifice in the face of the fanatic opposition, contribute materially to the advance of his company during the early critical period of the assault, and his unwavering devotion to duty throughout the bitter conflict was an inspiration to his comrades. I sought out people who knew him, interviewing many people, all who have passed on, like his best man at his wedding, Clinton Waters. Clinton recalled how everyone thought my uncle was high and mighty, when the John Bass alone he knew was very much down to earth. Many thought he was an alcoholic. <laughs> but Clinton explained that when my uncle walked into a bar, the, the, the drinks were lined up, and um, well, he drank a few of them. He did admit that my Uncle John did like his whiskey. Clinton also told me that Lena was the first woman who did not fawn all over my uncle. And even though my uncle technically outranked her, it was Lena who was in charge. I met Chuck Tatum, himself featured in the Pacific HBO series. Chuck told me that my uncle was less like a drill instructor and more like an older brother to those he led. In closing, what I did discover on my journey to find my uncle, basically, I wish I had joined the Marines because I, was, I found out about how his selflessness was in part developed by the Marine Corps, whose members are taught, drilled, the importance of looking out and taking care of others, up to the point that they are willing to sacrifice their lives for their fellow Marines. I say in part, because I am sure my Uncle John learned from his own father, an immigrant who started his own business, the importance of taking care of others. I also came to understand why his choice of tattoo was death before dishonor, as stated on his Medal of Honor Navy Cross citation. My Uncle John's selflessness was extraordinary, and that would explain why he is still celebrated 80 years after his death by an annual parade in the town where he grew up. Retired Cor Marine Corps Lieutenant General John Tulin described it best when he said, I think honor, courage, and commitment is something as relevant today as for the next 2,000 years, end of quote. We who comp comprise John Bassalone's legacy 
are delighted to have this magnificent ship, DDG-122, named in honor of our Uncle John, and upon commissioning, will become part of his legacy of service to our nation. The only regret I have is that Grandpa, <laughs> Salvatore, Grandma Theodora, Aunt Mary, Dolores, my mother, Uncle Al, Alfonso, Georgie, Donald, Aunt Kay, Aunt Phyllis, are not here, but I'm sure they are looking down and so proud. May God bless those who serve on this ship. God bless you all for coming and thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Roberta L. Shea. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Secretary, Admiral Cottle, distinguished guests, visitors, the uh, Mannion family, the Looney family, uh, Bassalone family, and all those who keep alive the memory of those heroes who have served among us. Sergeant Meyer, it's great to see you again. Thank you for your continued service. Tomorrow, 10 November, Marines worldwide will celebrate the Marine Corps birthday. And over the past 249 years, Marines have acquitted themselves on battlefields and foreign shores, in war and in peace. But few Marines are revered and few hold such an exclusive place among the heroes of our Corps as Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone. In fact, it is at the very beginning, the very beginning, that every private in our Corps is first imbued with the legacy of Gunnery Sergeant Bassalone, and importantly, their responsibility to uphold that legacy. At our boot camp, recruits who want to earn the title of Marine must first conquer, conquer the crucible. It is the final and most challenging trial of Marine Corps recruit training, a 54-hour test where they are challenged morally, mentally, and physically under some of the most arduous circumstances. And it is only after conquering the crucible that they are allowed to be called Marine and wear our Eagle Globe and Anchor. And for every single Marine, whether trained at Paris Island, South Carolina, or San Diego, California, Gunnery Sergeant Le Bassalone's legacy is brought to life during that crucible. Their drill instructor will read his Medal of Honor citation and the recruits reflect on his bravery, his selfless sacrifice, and leadership as they tackle obstacle after obstacle. In fact, in one obstacle, under simulated combat conditions, recruits work together to supply friendly forces, evoking the heroic ammunition resupply conducted by Gunnery Sergeant Bassalone at Guadalcanal. Through Gunnery Sergeant Bassalone's example, Recruits learn that extraordinary heroism is not an abstract concept, but a tangible goal against which every Marine must measure themselves. To shoulder the responsibility of that legacy, this is what they have volunteered to do by joining our Corps. And you know, John Bassalo himself was the ultimate volunteer, enlisting first in the Army, and then in the Marine Corps before Pearl Harbor and the mobilization. Think about it. By every measure, John Bassalone had already done his duty, yet he stepped forward again to serve and then again. And even then, rather than remain stateside after his heroic sacrifices at the Battle of Guadalcanal and to live comfortably, very well deserved as a national hero, Gunnery Sergeant Bassalo insisted upon returning to combat again to rejoin his Marines forward where his country needed him most. The USS John Bassalo will carry that fighting spirit, deploying forward, always forward, where our country needs her most. And like every Marine who has been touched by his legacy and the very formation of their military soul, the crew of the Bassalone is the proud custodian of that legacy. 
Our nation needs this ship and her crew forward, forward and ready to fight. And I know that when, not if, but when the time comes for great courage in moments of great consequence for our nation, this ship, manned by the finest sailors in the world, will exemplify John Bassalone's legacy of honor, courage, and commitment. Semper Fidelis. Thank you, Lieutenant General Shea. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Darrell Cottle. Good morning. Man, that was not much of a response. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, let's get some live here. This is a big event. Thank you, XO, for the introduction, and good morning, New York, and the crew of the USS Jean Bassalon. I just love being back in New York City. I couldn't get enough during Fleet Week a few months ago and was looking so forward to getting back to the city that never sleeps. Today I take great pleasure and immense pride in joining you for the commissioning of this incredible warship you see behind me. Over 500 feet of fighting American steel built by American shipyard workers. And I'd like to welcome and give my sincere thanks to several very important people joining us here today. Our ship sponsors, Ms. Ryan Mannion and Ms. Amy Looney Heffernan, thank you for carrying on the mantle of Sergeant Lena May Bassalon, United States Marine Corps Women's Reserve, the widow of this ship's namesake. In 1945, she solemnly christened our Navy's first vessel named in his honor, a destroyer as fierce as its time as the ship you see today. And to our maids of honor, Ms. Maggie and Honor Boric, state and local officials in both sides of the river, and all of our distinguished guests, thank you all for being here on this momentous and wonderful occasion, and even more evidence of the very special bond that New York and the Navy have. In this coming year, 330 proud American sailors will put this destroyer to sea and carry the name of Gunnery Sergeant John Bessalon to the far-flung corners of the globe, projecting combat power for decades to come. Now, for the crew, the fearless warriors before me that make this piece of metal of almost 10,000 tons of hundreds of miles of fiber optic cable, piping systems into a combat ship designed to decisively win our nation's wars, I offer the following. What you have accomplished in your preparation and execution to get this ship to the commissioning has been nothing short of amazing. For those who don't know, new construction ships typically are allotted about 120 days to accomplish a series of challenging certifications and preparations for leaving the shipbuilder's yard and being introduced to the fleet. Commander Livingston and his team answer the call every step of the way, aggressively knocking out each challenge to get the ship to this point. Great work, Captain. Your leadership, drive, and execution have made all the difference. My charge to you and your team is to keep that tenacity, toughness, and grit going because the challenge will just keep coming. The future will be just as demanding but I know you and your trained crew of over 300 of our Navy's finest sailors are ready. Your namesake, the Medal of Honor and Navy Cross winner and local hometown hero, hailing from just a few miles across the Hudson from here, carried that same fiery passion with him throughout the extraordinary conditions at Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima. Your job is to make this ship as valiant as her namesake. Sailing as boldly as the tin can sailors of World War II did, and always ready to unleash the full potential of this ship's combat power by perfecting your warfighting skills with mastery and boldness. When former CNO Arleigh Burke commissioned the first destroyer of this namesake class in 1991, he issued a challenge to the crew that echoes true to this day, and I quote, this ship is built to fight, and you had better know how. For the team on board USS John Bassalon, I know you can do it. 
and I thank you for your service, your dedication, and your warfighting spirit. May God bless our country. May God bless all of you and your families and many voyages and victories to come. And now I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, an extraordinary leader, a true friend and mentor of mine, the 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Secretary Del Toro, his family integrated from Cuba in 1961, and he was raised just right here in Hell's Kitchen. Following a successful 22-year naval career as a surface warfare officer, including the commissioning and commanding another Arleigh Burke class destroyer, the USS Bulkley. He is now responsible for over one million personnel as the leader of the Department of the Navy with an annual budget exceeding $250 billion. You will find no greater advocate for our Navy and Marine Corps team. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Good morning, New York City. Morning. I I'm sorry, but I'm from New York. I said, good morning, New York City. Morning. All right, all right. Now, I know this half is a little bit cold. That half is quite comfortably warm. But we're going to kick off my comments here by me asking you, Sergeant, to please stand up. Sergeant Meyer, we're going to recognize you, sir. Just like John Bassalone, you are a great American hero, Medal of Honor recipient. What you did in your actions in Iraq serve as an example for all our Marines, all our sailors, all our service members. Everybody, please get up. A round of applause for Sergeant Mayor. Thank you, Sergeant. We salute you. Well. Do I need to have you do some jumping jacks, too, while you're up? You know, I did grow up here in Hell's Kitchen, but it was a little bit different back then. When I meet people who don't have any idea what Hell's Kitchen is, I ask them, have you ever seen the movie West Side Story or the play? I said, well, it was just like West Side Story without the music and the dancing. But it's great to be back here in my hometown. Thank you, Admiral Cottle, for that kind introduction, and more importantly, for your commitment to our sailors as commander of our fleet forces commander, taking care of our sailors and Marines, service members every single day from Norfolk, Virginia, and to your wife, Donna. General General Shea, I am so proud to serve by your side, ma'am. Your service as our Marine forces commander, commanding all the Marines up and down the East Coast, and as the senior Marine in our United States Marine Corps, you serve as an example to every man and woman who serves in our Marine Corps and across our entire service. How about another hand of applause for General Shea? Now, Chuck, to your shipbuilders and, the ship, and all the employees of all the other companies who had something to do with building this great ship. You know, I had the opportunity to build the USS Bulkley in, in my active duty career, and I lived in the shipyard for about a year to a year and a half, and I know the hard work that goes into building these ships. And I know the quality that goes into building ships in Bath, Maine as well too, sir. We couldn't be prouder of the job that you've done here. Where are you? You're on my right. There you are, Chuck. Thank you and to all your shipbuilders and the entire shipbuilding industry. Thank you for what you've done. Now, to Ms. Diane Bassalone, thank you for being here, honoring your uncle's memory, his service, and our de his dedication to our Marine Corps and our nation, we just simply couldn't thank you enough to your entire family. And I also want to thank Ms. Ryan Mannion and Ms. Amy Looney Hefferman for serving as the sponsors of the USS Barcelona. Because you see, according to naval tradition, a ship sponsor's spirit and presence guide her and her crew throughout her time in service. We are honored that you are both here today as sponsors, and you will forever be the connection between this ship her crew, and her namesake. To my acting undersecretary, Tom Mancinelli, it's a good Italian name, isn't it, Tom? Thank you, sir, for stepping up to the plate when called upon. To my general counsel, Coffey, who also happens to be a New Yorker. Yes, the Department of the Navy happens to be lucky enough to have two New Yorkers at the very top of its leadership tree. Thank you for your leadership as general counsel and for your friendship. 
and most importantly to my wife, Betty, who's been by my side for 41 years. Yes, we met here in New York. We married in uh, Story of Queens. And uh, thank you, Betty, for your many years of service to our nation and to our family and for everything you've done. Ships commissionings are like a time-honored tradition for our Navy. They date back to 1775 and the commissioning of the first Continental Navy ship, the USS Alfred. And 226 years later, I had the honor to commission the USS Bulkley right here on this pier in New York City on this. It was also a momentous occasion as John Bulkley, who was also a Medal of Honor recipient, a World War II veteran, was the first naval ship to return to New York City after the horrific attack here on 9-11. And it was on 9-11 that I personally oversaw the last commissioning committee meeting aboard mighty ship Intrepid, along with my own commissioning committee members that day. Many brave heroes rose to the occasion that day, as we all know. And very appropriately so, USS John Bassalone is named after the most decorated Marines in our nation's history. It will pay tribute to his legacy and the countless others who have served our country with distinction. As others have already mentioned, his extraordinary bravery during the battles of Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima, and the latter of which he was fatally wounded, earned him the Medal of Honor, as well as a Navy Cross, the two highest honors of our nation. Now, 249 years after we welcomed Alfred into our nation's service, 249 years after the birth of our Marine Corps, and nearly 80 years after his historic deeds, we gather here to commission our nation's newest surface combatant into the United States Navy named after him. But the world today is much different than the world the American colonists lived in when they began our struggle for independence. It's different from the world that we experienced in World War II or even when I served on active duty and commissioned the Bulkley 23 years ago. The global security environment is rapidly evolving, presenting new and complex challenges that demand our sustained engagement as a Navy and a Marine Corps and as a nation. Following the October 7th attacks in Israel more than a year ago, our Navy and Marine Corps were swiftly deployed to the region, forming an integrated force capable of responding to any threat. Our warships, including destroyers, ships like the USS John Bastalone, and our sailors and Marines deployed on them have demonstrated exceptional performance under fire successfully deterring and defeating missile and drone attacks targeting innocent maritime shipping. We have been working tirelessly alongside our NATO allies and Middle Eastern partners to protect innocent civilian mariners and commercial shipping from Iranian-aligned Houthi attacks. Our Navy and Marine Corps team serves as a proud and powerful testament of our nation's commitment to our allies and partners in Europe, the Middle East, and the Indo-Pacific regions. Let me be very clear. There is nothing ordinary about what we have asked our sailors and Marines to do for the past 13 months. Their honor, their loyalty, their sacrifice for the good of our Navy, our Marine Corps, and indeed our nation inspire me and should inspire every one of you every single day. Service is not an obligation. It's a privilege, a chance to be part of something greater than ourselves and to uphold the values that define us as a nation. Service is not merely a job or a career. It's a fundamental aspect of our democracy, deeply integrated in the very fabric of our nation, woven by the men and women like Gunnery Sergeant Bastalone and his fellow Marines during World War II. And selfless young men and women remain the backbone of our department. They are not only war fighters, they're diplomats, they're educators, they are indeed leaders. We often view American history with the benefit of hindsight viewing victory as inevitable, as if the march of progress itself is inexorable. Yet, on the battlefields of Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima, victory was far from being certain. It was the relentless valor of sailors and Marines like Gunnery Sergeant Bassalone, like all those who serve today, that won the day, not destiny. Our strength has always been in our technology, but in the indomitable spirit of our people who serve, in closing, to the officers and crew of USS John Bassalone, I know you will uphold those same values that Gunnery Sergeant Bassalone embodied, courage, sacrifice, and dedication to our nation. 
Everywhere you sail, this ship will be a beacon of our nation's enduring commitment to freedom and security for all people. And a reminder of the many thousands of sailors and Marines who have gone before us. I cannot promise you fair winds and following seas, but I do know that you are ready to take this ship to sea, accomplish the mission, and promote peace around the world. And it is only through the courage of sailors, Marines, and service members like you that we are granted the sacred right of casting our votes freely, shaping the future of our nation, of our democracy, and preserving the foundation of that very democracy. In closing, on a personal note, I want to extend my thanks to each and every one of you for the privilege of serving as your 78th Secretary of the Navy these past three and a half years, along with my wife, Betty. I thank you all for joining us this morning. May God bless our sailors, our Marines, our civilians, the crew of this mighty ship, our families, and indeed, our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro. Sir, I would be honored if you would now place our ship in commission. Captain, place the USS Barcelona in commission. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> On behalf of the President of the United States and for the Secretary of the Navy, I hereby place United States ship John Barcelona in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail in her. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro. <laughs> Executive Officer, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's Company, us 10, Chun. The commission pennant in professional national navies began to take form late into the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt the long, narrow pennants to be flown on their ships at the main masthead to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS John Baslow. Very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander Naval Military Personnel Command to Commander Karn Livingston, United States Navy. Subject. Buper's order number 9580 of 1 April 2022. Subject. When directed by reporting senior, detach from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit John Bassalone as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS John Bassalone, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Caudill, United States ship John Bassalone is in commission and I am in command. Very well, Captain. Congratulations. Well done. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, sir.
Officer to deck. Set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer to deck is a commanding officer's direct re representative and while on watch is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is a traditional symbol of an officer to the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have two of Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone's nieces with us today. Ms. Kim Van Note and Ms. Diane Hawkins will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Cole Wheeler from Portland, Oregon. The Petty Officer to Wash is Information Systems Technician, Second Class, Janessa Huey from Surprise, Arizona. The Messenger of the Watch is Sonar Technician, Second Class, Zaya Bestein from Brooklyn, New York. And the Boston Mate of the Watch is Boston Mate, Second Class, Neilon Curley from Tacoma, Washington. Set the watch on deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. <laughs> Captain, the watch is set. Very well. The spirit of a Navy warship is the embodiment of her sponsors. You may have noticed we have two sponsors and therefore twice the enthusiasm enjoyed by most ships. Ms. Ryan Mannion and Ms. Amy Looney Heffernan christened this ship in Bath, Maine on the 18th of June, 2022, and they imbued this ship and her crew with their charm and grace. Ladies, I would be honored if you would man our ship and bring her to life. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. I stand here today before the ship's crew, today's warrior class, as we gather to honor an amazing man and hero, John Bassalone. And in doing so, I feel caught somewhere between the past and present. I'm looking out on the faces that the best our Navy and our country has to offer. Faces of eagerness, enthusiasm, youth, and optimism. Hungry for the opportunity to serve our great nation. These are the faces of the men and women who today's younger generation looks up to and desires to emulate. These are the men and women who will continue to define what it means to serve and sacrifice. At the same time, we all sit in the towering shadow of a man who has already made that sacrifice and has built a profound legacy of service. John Bassalone, the only enlisted Marine to receive both the Navy Cross and Medal of Honor for his service in World War II, set the gold standard for what it means to serve with honor, courage, and humility. I would even venture to guess that this iconic figure of Marine Corps history was the inspiration for some of the men and women who chose to serve and who join us here today. And somewhere in between these two visions, a heroic figure of the past and the models of character for our present, I see two other faces. My brother, Travis Mannion, and his best friend, Brendan Looney. Two fallen heroes, one Marine and one Navy SEAL, and while they experience the modern warfare that today's service members have likewise come to know, they also built a legacy with their sacrifice and were inspired by men like John Bassalone and his 20th century counterparts. One of the most common questions I receive after people find out I'm a Gold Star sister is what can I personally do to support families of the fallen? I will tell you what I tell them. Remember the heroes who fought and died for us. Remember the values of character they represented and defended. Learn their stories, say their names. Do what you can to ensure that the powerful legacies of the men and women 
who serve our great nation are never forgotten. And moreover, allow those legacies to serve as inspiration and motivation for you to give back to this great nation in the way that is most fitting to you. This morning, I have the amazing opportunity to follow my own advice. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we remember the distinguished legacy of Marine Corps legend, Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone. By all accounts, an iconic, borderline mythological figure in the military home that I grew up in. I cannot quite articulate what it means to me to play a small role in keeping this hero alive for generations to come. I feel as though I'm finally being given the opportunity to do so for the Bazalone family, what so many Americans have done for me, to ensure that the personal story and most importantly legacy of this patriot will live on for generations of leaders. Very humbly, I thank you for allowing me to serve in this capacity, and I want to ask Amy Looney Heffernan to share some thoughts as well. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you to all of our distinguished guests who have joined us for the commissioning of this incredible ship that serves as a testament to the strength and ingenuity of this country. I want to echo Ryan's sentiment on what an absolute honor it is to serve as co-sponsor of the USS John Bassalone. His story is truly the stuff of myth and legend. Holding off a far superior Japanese force, severely outnumbered, fighting with every ounce of strength and courage that he could muster, with only two other surviving Marines during the Guadalcanal campaign. It's hard for most of us to even fathom the bravery and fortitude that that would take. And while that courageous event was what ultimately earned Bassalone the Congressional Medal of Honor, what strikes me the most about his character is what happened after that experience. He was widely celebrated for that achievement and briefly accepted a highly publicized and safe job selling war bonds. Almost immediately, however, he felt out of place. Bassalone was far too humble to live as a celebrity, and desired instead to live as a Marine, fighting alongside the men that he called brothers. It was in that role that he gave the ultimate sacrifice at the Battle of Iwo Jima at the age of 28. As a Gold Star spouse, I believe my late husband, Lieutenant Brendan Looney, was cut from the same cloth as John Bassalone which makes my presence here today all the more meaningful and all the more humbling. A quote I often remind myself since losing Brendan is no one is actually dead until the ripples they cause in the world die away. As the ship's sponsor, it is my duty and my privilege to bestow good luck over this vessel and all those that will sail aboard. To all those who play a role in building and sailing her, whenever you are faced with those difficult challenges, I hope that you feel the ripples of John Bassalone lifting you up and helping guide the way. I hope that you are inspired by the men and women, like my late husband, Brendan, like Travis Mannion, who have gone before you and served with honor, loyalty, and sacrifice. And like Ryan, I want to thank each of you from the bottom of my heart for this opportunity to continue the legacy of another incredible hero, John Bassalone. May God bless the USS John Bassalone, all those that created her, and all those that will sail her. And now, 
officers and crew of USS John Bazalone, man our ship and bring her to life.
more. I don't think they're going to do it because of the, the screen. If they, if they do it, it'll damage the screen. It pops the cap. Can we do the other side? I don't know if they're going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS John Bassalone salutes you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy and Marine Corps. John Bassalone, ready to. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS John Bassalone is manned and ready. Farewell. Commodore Anderson, USS John Bassalone is manned and ready, ready to fight and win. Reporting for duty, sir. Very well. Secretary Del Toro, request mission to break your flag, sir. Captain, break my flag. Aye, aye, sir. Executive officer, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> Quartermaster, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. <clears throat> Captain, the flag of the Secretary of the Navy is flying over USS John Bassalon. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Carn Livingston, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS John Bassalon. Ship's Company, Parade, rest! Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, friends, family, shipmates past, present, and I'll even add future shipmates. We gather here on this beautiful day to celebrate a momentous occasion. The commissioning of a second warship dedicated to the life and selfless sacrifice of Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalon. Our command vision states that we are selfless warriors, a tough and resilient team, that are, we are connected, confident, and ready. We sharpen our spears by learning our ship, our jobs, and our place in the John Bassalon Battle Organization. We take a stand as a unified team. We stand for what's right. We move forward. We seize absolute ownership of our assigned mission and all that goes into accomplishing it. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of you today stand the proud sailors of the next generation USS John Bassalon. These selfless warriors stand ready to continue his legacy of selfless service, guiding our ship into harm's way and defending the values that we hold dear. To Admiral Cottle, Lieutenant General Shea, Admiral Anderson, I thank you for your leadership and the opportunity to be here with you today. Secretary Del Toro, thank you so much for the remarks. I'm honored at, by your contribution to the events this week. As I look at this impressive ship, I cannot help but be amazed by its sheer might and effectiveness. This destroyer is the 72nd ship in the class, and it's the result of years of meticulous planning and determination of countless individuals. Today we also pay tribute to the dedicated sailors who will serve aboard her. These selfless warriors are the soul of this vessel. And it's their unwavering dedication that will bring this ship to life. They're the ones who will face the challenges of the sea, protect our nation's interests across the globe. Throughout the past few years, while our ship has completed construction, many of these sailors have come and gone, each leaving their mark on this remarkable vessel. 
I salute the efforts of all of our former crew members and all of our honorary plank owners who helped forge this vessel into the marvel it is today. A special, th excuse me. A special thank you to our hull manager, Mr. Al LeClaire. You kept me fully aware of the progress of construction and testing. I miss our, ship, our weekly ship walkthroughs. You gave me and my crew gentle reminders as we approached fitting out and certification. Thank you for your devotion and the countless questions you fielded from me and my crew. Thank you to our Aegis test team for allowing my crew to come alongside and learn their systems. As you work through the test plan, Mr. Rick LaPointe, thank you for taking time each week to walk me through the ship, to let me get eyes on where the tests were happening and where the troubled spots were that we were working through. Thank you, Mr. Robert Wynott, our PMS 339 representative. I cannot list all the things you did to assist me and my crew. Thank you to Danny Nicholson and the Noblest team at the Precom unit. Your assistance and expertise are invaluable. And Danny and Robert, thank you for listening to our complaints. You were both a solid sounding board. I'd like to extend a thank you to the Navy's commissioning support team and the ceremonies team for their steadfast efforts in making today's ceremony a remarkable event. To Captain Frank Russo and Dan Dermer of the John Basloan John Commissioning Committee, I sincerely appreciate the support in making this a special event in the life of our ship. Your hospitality to John Basil and crew has been amazing and we've absolutely enjoyed ourselves this week. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you to my fellow pre-com CEOs who are present today, including all those past pre-com CEOs. We share a common bond which a relatively small number of commanding officers in the Navy can claim. We're honored to be joined today by Marines. And particularly, we have some Marines here from the 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, and 29 Palms. And ladies and gentlemen, these Marines, many of them are also machine gunners, just like our namesake, John Bassalone. Some of them serve in the same platoon that John Bassalone served in at Guadalcanal. Marines, thank you for being with us today to celebrate Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone. To our wonderful families, both here and abroad, including my wife, Lindsay, and our sons, Jacob, Caleb, and Tyler, a heartfelt thank you for your love and support. It truly underpins the success of this crew. We're also blessed to have an outstanding ombudsman who tirelessly volunteers her time to bridge the communications between myself and our families and provide crucial support when the ship is at sea. Our families face the challenge of being located across three sites, Bath, Maine, Norfolk, Virginia, and Mayport, Florida. To Ms. Angela Burkhart, thank you for your commitment. I want to extend my gratitude to the numerous waterfront organizations that faithfully supported our team. Commander Naval Surface Forces Atlantic, Commander Naval Surface Group Southeast, afloat training groups in Norfolk and Mayport, supervisor of shipbuilding Bath and the Noblest team in both Norfolk and Mayport, sorry, in both Norfolk and Bath. Your unwavering support was instrumental in helping us achieve this significant milestone and we could not have done it without you. To Mr. Chuck Crew and our BIW hull manager, Sarah Richardson, and the team of thousands of BIW shipbuilders who work tirelessly to hone the steel that is this amazing warship, I thank you. It is your team that sows the cloth of freedom, that protects our nation's interests, and I am honored to set sail in such a remarkably constructed vessel. Let us not forget, Bath Belt is best built. To our ship sponsors, Ms. Ryan Mann and Ms. Amy Looney and her maids of honor, Maggie Boric, who also is a midshipman at the Academy. And Miss Honor Boric, thank you for being here with us today. As every sailor knows, it's the support of our loved ones at home that give us the strength to endure the harsh sea. And this holds just as true for our sponsors. Our sailors will come and go over the years, but it's our sponsors that will remain the lifelong heart and soul of this ship. We're grateful for your support. Ryan and Amy, your contributions to our sailors and families have been nothing short of amazing, and I look forward to strengthening this special relationship with you for years to come. To the crew of John Vassalone, this is your special moment. Take it for what it is. It's incredible. Relish it. You have seized absolute ownership of your mission. You can smile now. Seriously, all of you, you guys can smile. Be proud of the excellence you've achieved. I'd like to again remind my shipmates of the source of that excellence for which we strive. As selfless warriors, in everything we do, we honor the heritage of our namesake, Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone, and the heritage of the previous USS Bassalone. 
we have the solemn duty of living up to that warrior legacy of honor, loyalty, and sacrifice. As we strive to live up to his example, we're reminded of his selfless service and devotion to honing his skill. These characteristics remind us that we must be ready to fight and win. The lessons taken from his life will serve as a compass for all current and future selfless warriors. Our ship's motto, honor, loyalty, and sacrifice, characterizes the life and service of John Bastalone. These words honor his legacy. In a most fitting and parallel comparison, these words also honor the legacy of the loved ones of our sponsors, Marine Corps First Lieutenant Travis Mannion and Navy Lieutenant Brennan Looney. Inspired by the legacy of these selfless warriors, the USS John Bastalone motto charges selfless warriors to sharpen their spears. We're dedicated to becoming expert tacticians. We're charged to take a stand, to hold our line, to stand for what's right. We're charged to move forward as a unified, synchronized, and lethal force. The ship and crew before us today embodies these principles. It represents the continuity of John Bastlin's legacy, ensuring that his example endures for generations to come. To the crew serving aboard this ship, both now and for many years to come, remember that you're entrusted with a tremendous responsibility. Uphold the legacy of John Bastlin. May your service be marked by honor, loyalty, and sacrifice. And may you serve our nation with the same unwavering dedication that John Bastlin exemplified. May John Bastlin sail with pride and honor illuminating the path of peace in a world sometimes darkened by uncertainty. May this ship's presence inspire not just those who serve aboard her, but all who lay his eyes on her, reminding us that even in the face of adversity, these selfless warriors and their pursuit of excellence will prevail. Thank you. May God bless it, John Basilo and all who sail in her. John Basilo, attention! Through three nights and three days, his line never fell. With honor, loyalty, and sacrifice, we will serve our ship well. Selfless warriors, sharpen your spears. Oh, oh. Thank you. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the final tribute to Gunnery Sergeant John Bastlone, followed by the benediction that will be offered by Chaplain Murray. Let us pray. Eternal Father, from whom we come and to whom we ultimately return, we commend this ship, the USS John Bassalone, to your care and keeping. Make her name great among those whose judgment is honored. Bless those who sail her. Sustain them always in their pursuit of peace through power. Lord, bless us and keep us. Lord, may your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. Lord, lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace forevermore. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our platform guests.